Hey, how's it going all? I just want to do another lesson on the mark of the beast. Uh, so to me, this is an extremely important prophecy. Uh, it's to me like the last thing that um, the Bible needs to, to prove itself to be true. Flat Earth is um, strong, strong support for the Bible being true, the entire Bible narrative. And so, you know, the, the Bible makes a bold claim that, uh, that the mark of the beast uh, will be implemented worldwide. And um, so I want to just talk about it and then also my, um, just in my mind, how I think it would have to come and be implemented in the next five years. And, and even that would probably be more than enough time. I've put in a, enough of a cushion in there that um, to me, that's plenty of time for, uh, for us to see whether it manifests the way the Bible predicts. And then the Bible uh, is true. So I'm going to start with Luke 12. And um, I will go start with 51. Uh, this is Jesus speaking. Suppose ye that I am that I'm come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. So we see that all this, you know, new world order, we're all one, let's all love each other and this and that uh, is not biblical. So Jesus is speaking directly against that. And in fact, he is the one that is um, causing the division. For from henceforth, there shall be five in one house divided three against two and two against three. Then he goes on to say, the father shall be divided against the son, son against the father, mother against daughter. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. Um, and when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and it comes, cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? So he's calling people out for um, being able to predict you know, earthly things, cloud movement, wind, and all that, but um, not being spiritual. And so... The, the, we have to balance that with um, the fact that in Matthew 24, uh, 36 reads, But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. He's speaking about the end times. Uh, but as the days of Noah, Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And um, he goes on to say, Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken and the other left. I feel this is referring to the rapture. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. So he's saying, it's kind of an um, almost contradictory statement. He's saying like, there are signs and stuff that, um, <clears throat> that to look out for. Uh, in this case, the signs are just people will just think like everything's fine, you know, and... Um, but he also in other places describes, you know, like wars, rumors of wars and um, earthquakes in diverse places and um, lovers of self and all this kind of stuff. So he gives signs of what the end, end times will look like. But then he also says there will be a group of people who will just be pretending that, you know, everything's fine. And then um, he's also saying that, uh, you know, that uh, we for in such hour as ye think not the son of man cometh. So he's almost saying that. Uh, uh, it'll be unexpected. And so what I what I think, even though it seems contradictory, it's he said in for in such an hour. So the actual very specific moment, uh, no one will know. And uh, he reaffirms that in the very first statement. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. So when you look at the, the, sca the, the scale, the granularity, he's saying the day and the hour no one knows. But what he's implying is that we will know like the month, the years, and, and definitely in the decade, you know, like he's saying that it's not like it's not going to be such a mystery that you will not know at all that you're in the end. And so this to me is a very, very important um, set of verses that Jesus is talking about. He's like, if we have predictive capability of like, you know, physical stuff, you know, here on earth, spiritually inclined people, whoever they are, and uh, clearly the people who've been predicting the end times in the past and it didn't happen we're, we're not spiritual. And so it's putting kind of my own 
spiritualness or potential for being spiritual on the line. And I'm comfortable with that because for me, the, the thing that um, is extremely unique about this time period that we live in is not necessarily just the evil, which a lot of it, there is a lot of it worldwide. You know, you just have to um, watch the corporate media to see that and um, all the stuff going on in the world and all the tension and, and uh, airstrikes and uh, all that stuff. And But uh, the thing that is unique about this time period is the amount of coordinated, coordinated deception. And so this could never have happened, this amount of deception consistent worldwide could never have happened in human history because pe groups of people were not com communicating with each other in the past. And so you can't have one group on one part of the earth and another group on the other part of the earth conspiring to do something um, without them talking. You know, they don't have like some kind of telepathic connection to one another. And so now that the communication is, uh, is, is interconnected, and it's extremely easy to to transmit information between one, you know from one end to the earth to the other, and um, that is that is what, in my opinion, the mark of the beast is the sort of like reason for you know it's like we could very much be living in an age right now where it's just evil and the deception is just deception and um, it's not in place to um, usher in you know the mark of the beast, which to me would be. Um, just extremely strange, you know, that uh, that there would be this much deception that really is not serving any purpose, um, any practical purpose, just because all the financial um, systems are, log are all centralized, you know, and um, all that kind of stuff. And so they already have access to the elite and the people running this, this world right now, already have access to all the money, the purse strings. And so it doesn't make sense for them to... Uh, you know, do this kind of enslavement um, to all people financially through this credit-based system worldwide, unless it served a specific purpose, you know. And so they already have all the, the power and, uh, and all that. They could tell pretty much anybody to do whatever they want. And um, they have all the military control, you know, worldwide. And um, so there's no, like, threat of any real kind of uprising of any serious overthrow of the power structures on Earth and, and all that kind of stuff. So... They're just, it's an incredibly powerful coordinated system, you know, that, that exists worldwide. And so to me, if it, if it's just there in place, just for the sake of it, you know, I don't see any benefit that the people have because enslaving people this much financially, um, creates an unstable system. You know, it's like once you like push people too much or squeeze them or restrict their access to resources to stay alive, you know, it creates instability and it actually will then um, undermine the ability for the quote unquote elite to um, retain their power. You know, if there's literally, if you just keep yelling at people and like, or uh, stealing from them and then they have nothing left, then, you know, there's nothing else, else to take, <laughs> you know, it's like, and that's what's happened now. Uh, this is the most kind of livable, unlivableness that can exist in, in my opinion. And, and if it's not there, we're, we're very, very close within the matter of like, a year or two at the most. And so we're at that threshold. And so just the, the amount of sort of um, centralization of the financial system and how everybody has a hook into it, you know, whether we like it or not, and uh, the amount of deception that has gone along to create a system like that and to make it make sense, even though now a lot of us know that it's completely evil. Uh, if that doesn't serve a particular purpose, to me, that would be extremely strange. And so that uh, the Bible... The Bible predicts um, a lot of, you know, all these things, division, you know, um, wars and, and uh, all this kind of stuff, earthquakes, uh, false prophets, which is the Bible's way of just talking about deception, you know, and, and truth. When, when anybody comes with uh, presenting what they, what they claim is truth, they are acting as a prophet. And so the Bible will, th you, you know, is using that term, but really that represents everything like the corporate media right now is saying that the economy is fine so they're at their um, profits about the economy you know and they're saying like you know everything's fine no recession coming you know don't worry about it this and that so they're making statements uh, about prophecy prophecy is telling things before they happen uh, predicting things and so uh, we have people predicting that um you know, everything's going to get better with automation and, you know, more robots and technology. It's going to be great. You know, we're going to advance. We're going to go to the moon and all that kind of stuff. 
all these things are, 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 these are prophets. These are people telling us things that they think that we should, you know, believe is true and, um, all that kind of stuff. And so th this is, uh, this is, has been prophesied and predicted that will happen, that there will be an incredible amount of deception. And so it's definitely correct about that. It could very much have been a coincidence that it predicted that it could, it could have just been predicting that, you know, the chaos will just increase. And so it kind of got lucky, but the thing that again makes the the mark of the beast very very um specific and um very much a prophecy because it is not something that will happen organically and so this was a great point brought up um in a discussion with somebody uh, after the non sequitur we talked about what makes something an actual prophecy it would have to be something that's not obvious that you know it's not like what jesus is saying about earthly things like you know the wind or the clouds you know like a weatherman is not like a religious person necessarily, you know, like they're not like a prophet just because they're able to predict the weather and do it fairly accurately. So <clears throat> we can't say the weather um, coming true is is prophetic, you know, or spiritual or supernatural. And so prophecies for them to be supernatural and for them to um, be something that a person should actually look out for, they have to be not obvious. And so honestly, what Jesus is saying, where he's saying that there'll be a lot of confusion and division and all that kind of stuff, that to me is like a 50-50 chance that will happen. It's like either the world from his, from when he's saying it going forward kind of gets better or it starts, you know, getting worse. Or um, there could just be pockets of like confusion that make this prophecy true. So that in and of itself is not enough to validate Jesus Christ and, and all the things that he said just because he prophesied confusion, you know, in the world. And so that is just something that can happen kind of organically. And he could just... Um, uh, get lucky, you know, and, and make a prediction like that. <clears throat> However, and even the mark of the beast in and of itself could happen and in some ways is happening organically. Um, you know, just the development of it, just because convenience is getting more and more um, money behind it, really, you know, and getting more and more effort and uh, technological effort and, and uh, propaganda effort behind it that, you know, convenience is a good thing. You know, it's, it's something that should be virtuous and, um, uh, it's good for you. You have more time to do other things and all that when a majority of people are absolutely time strapped, you know, broke and all this kind of stuff. So it's, <clears throat> there's a lot of propaganda pushing it as well. But, um, so the thing about the mark of the beast that makes it, um, unique is that, uh, the first thing is that it's saying that it's, it's for all people, you know? And so this is, uh, basically saying that the enslavement that would need to happen would have to be worldwide. And so that's a pretty uh, amazing thing. Just coincidentally, we have a centralized um, economic system right now where everyone is tied to it directly or indirectly. And, um, you know, that, gee, that could be a coincidence. And then, um, then now the government having this control would then need to force uh, people to take something in their body to allow them to continue to buy and sell, which is essentially allowing them to, to, to live, to function in this uh, interconnected society. And so that's the second layer. And then uh, the third layer is the punishment, you know, that the Bible predicts will happen is that people who take it will will be punished and not be punished by people on earth, but, but by God's angels. And so there's three layers to this prophecy that make it impossible. The third one makes it obvious that, that God exists because God is doing the punishment himself. But you know, even the first two make this uh, prophecy unlikely or impossible to be considered just uh, statistical chance. Because whenever we get into the realm of something happening worldwide, that in and of itself implies a conspiracy. For something to happen worldwide um, means that God is involved. Because no person, no group of people would have this kind of ambition to chip all people just out of nowhere, you know, again, it doesn't benefit them in any way. Like it doesn't benefit um, the elite to have uh, a chip in a person's body when they already know where everybody is. Like, you know, it's not a big deal. Like they, they don't need the chip to find out where you are. Or if you're like evading taxes or something like that, like they'll find you eventually. And they know that if you're quote unquote off the grid, there's not much you can do. You know, once you swipe a credit card anywhere, or once you do anything in the electronic arena, which is pretty much everything, you 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 are you can they can find you if they want 
if they want to know where you are, if they're just, even if they're just curious to know where you are and stuff like that. Uh, I remember hearing a story. I'm not sure if it's true, but like my cousin was telling me that somebody went up to another person, like who worked, someone who worked in the government went up to somebody else and asked them a question, you know, like, how's your, how's your child doing? You know, some, like someone, some stranger like that, the person didn't even know, like, and they knew the child's first name and all that kind of stuff. And like, like it's, it's like obvious that that's the case. You know, there are things that the government knows about me. Um, if they wanted, if someone really cared about like all the things that, you know, I've been doing for the last three or four days, they could just look at my credit card statements. They could look at all my internet history and they could literally almost piece together my entire day. They could literally tell you like Shrag was on his phone for 30 minutes here. Then, uh, he went to wildcat golf course and did that. And then he came back and then he did this and, and that. And, um, he was live streaming for a little while on his YouTube. Like he, they'll know everything. And so they don't need a microchip to, uh, to add to that. You know, it just would make their data collection slightly easier, but, but not necessary. And so it's not a necessary function for enslavement because the financial centralization and control of the money supply, that is the control, you know, that they, and they already have that and they've had that for a while. And so, the thing is so big and in many ways nonsensical that it has to be from God. And so this notion that rich and poor, free and bond will be chipped to me is uh, is proof that we are living in those times just because the deception would need to be worldwide and um, it would has to it has to affect all people. And so one could think that all this deception worldwide and coordination is just a coincidence and working towards something else or nothing, no real end goal in mind. But to me, that's a stretch. You know, it's becoming very, very obvious that um, all of this stuff is leading up towards um, the big brother implementing their final, final last um, initiative, technological initiative uh, in the people's bodies. And so to me, the people that take it, they're not even necessarily good or evil. They're just actors, you know, they're just characters like anybody who takes it. God has predestined them to take it and they have no faith like God is just and, and we're told in the Bible to just uh, measure people by the amount of faith God has given them. And they just don't have faith. You know, it's like they, they don't they're not allowed to think about an afterlife. They're not allowed to think about God in any serious way. And uh, they're not spiritual. And so it's not even necessarily that they're evil. It's just God has predestined them to, to do it. And we hope that we are not that gullible and stupid that God is using us um, as a character in his movie in that way. And so that's, a, that's the situation, you know, that, that we're in. And um, one thing that I wanted to mention that I'm going to start invoking when I interact with people, uh, whether ball earth, flat earth, or religious, non-religious, and... For people when that I want that want to discuss with me or I discuss things of a serious nature, like not the everyday thing. Like I have friends who I golf with or people that I work with, you know, and we we operate, you know, in a way that is predictable and like you know we know what to expect, you know, from other people, and it's not like a spiritual thing. It's just day to day stuff. You know, I won't expect, I won't quiz, you know the you know, the person at the retail counter, you know, about this. But what I am going to start doing is asking people do like hypothetical, if they were to be faced with this microchip and the government forced you, even if it never happens, but if it does ever happen that the government would force you to take something in your body to access your own bank account, would you do it? And if they will say yes, I will just not talk to that person, you know, and it's like, and it's nothing personal. It's just, we don't have anything in common. Even if the uh, mark of the beast doesn't come to pass, I don't, I don't like vibe with that. You know, I'm like, I'm not the type, even if the government was a lot less evil than it is now, uh, even if the government was actually fairly righteous, they still shouldn't force us to do that. You know, like that, that is evil no matter what. Like once someone forces us to do anything, we are now a slave to that person. Or at least they've, in that moment, they're expressing that they have control over us, you know? And, and in this case, it's a pretty massive thing because it involves, you know, inserting something into our body potentially. And so that is just not right fundamentally. And so I have issues with that, even if it wasn't in the Bible, but it's just made obvious in the Bible that it's, uh, it's evil and it's the last expression uh, of, the, of the evil and enslavement on earth in the end times. And so I'm going to start 
asking people and it's not like I'm getting a request every day, but even like once in a while, if someone wants to debate me about flat earth, ball earth, or uh, just talk about, you know, religion or whatever, um, to me, it's okay. We need to start asking these people, you know, like, uh, would they do it, you know, and stuff like that. And so I know one of the Hebrew Israelite groups does, um, you know, speak of the mark of the beast as being a microchip. But the other ones, you know, like they, they are not uh, sure or they don't, you know, uh, proclaim it in any serious way. But even with the guys at GMS, like I worry about them with not to, not because of anything that's necessarily their fault, but their leadership um, that they may switch teams. And so but just in general, like there's not a lot of people on the earth right now who are really vocal about what they will do with, when faced with uh, with this uh, this chip, you know, if it happens. And and like I said, even if it doesn't happen, dealing with people who are against that movement no matter what is those are the people that I will take seriously, you know, and I, I don't want to talk to people who um, make stories about, oh, it's a good thing you need it. What if this gets lost and this and that? Those are people that are they're zombies, you know, like they're so lost in this whole world of optimization and speeding everything up and everything has to be efficient, this and that. Those people are robots. That's the way a robot thinks is like, oh, no, I got to do this. Someone told me to do this. Move my arm up, down, move this, be here, deliver that go to the next thing. That's what, that's a robot. You know, that is literally the definition of a robot is doing things based on, on some, something else, something else's instruction. And so a person who is like parroting all those, uh, quote unquote virtues of, of the modern world of the technological age that we live in, that's a person that I don't want to associate with they, You know, they're not spiritual. And even if there was no spirit world or whatever, I don't want to talk to somebody like that. Like, someone's that obsessed about being efficient and like ever doing everything timely and like um all that kind of stuff and like you know the, that's that's uh, that's insane <laughs> you know like let those people go be robots you know like that's fine god's gonna tag them um with the mark of the beast and then uh the bible predicts that he will <clears throat> clean them up you know uh, for lack of a better phrase he's literally going to zap them uh via him him and the angels and so you know, if that ever does happen, that's the only uh, righteous thing, in my opinion, that should happen right after. If the mark of the beast comes out, there's no point in uh, having, uh, you know, people kill each other because God's identified all the people that he doesn't like and he's created and programmed to take it. And he's going to kind of clean up the mess. You know, if you're that gullible to take a chip or faithless that uh, the government is forcing you to to take uh, to access your own hard earned money, <clears throat> uh you know, you're just a robot, <clears throat> you know, and that's, that's not even necessarily an insult. That's just what it is, you know, and anybody who takes it, again, we have to pray that God does not uh, lower our IQ in the last days and uh, succumb to that uh, mad madness. But um, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's crazy, you know, to, to do something like that, when it's not necessary. That's the main issue is that <clears throat> it's evil, because it is absolutely not necessary, and will never be necessary. You know, it's like, if, uh, if you need to have something in your body in order to like function in a society, that society is demonic. You know, it's, it's Satan. You know, that's exactly what Satan would do. He would require you to tag yourself just to show your allegiance to him for no reason. You know, like you could easily just have credit cards and how many extra seconds does it take to um, use a credit card or, or whatever to already access a perverted financial system you know, this is the last sort of straw, you know, with God. And so to me, that's something I'm going to start using with people. And, and on the comment board, you know, if someone wants to interact with me in any regular way or in, or in any way um, outside of just kind of business and um, predictable ways, if we want to talk about, you know, things literally out of this world, I'm going to start asking people hypotheticals if they were faced with this decision, what, what would they do? And if they say, yeah, you know, I would, you know, forget about who cares what God thinks or I don't care. And I sense that they're sincere and adamant about that and um, kind of obstinate. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to interact with them. I actually literally just don't I don't even want I will. They will not exist in my in my mind. You know, they will they will be deleted from my life, you know, and, and my brain has a very, very good way of doing that. Uh, so, you know, and I would highly recommend other people do the same uh, because that person or that group of people are just not people that um, 
are virtuous. You know, then they're not going to talk about the evils of uh, the corporate world and mass layoffs happening all over the place, the enslavement. They're not going to talk about the evil in the world in any serious way. And then, you know, it's not a physical mark, but to me, that's kind of a a discernment, a spiritual discernment to know that um, those are people that are highly likely that are going to be tagged and you know, don't, don't get in the way of God doing what he needs to do. You know, like we don't want to be around those people. We don't need to influence them. We don't need to change their mind. That's not our job. God has predestined a lot of people to be dumb enough to take the mark of the beast if it comes out, you know, and uh, let's not spoil their, their time, you know, and I've, I've had to think about this a lot lately is that I can, I need to warn people, you know, and be fair and, um, careful in the way that I word it to not come across like I'm the one implementing it and this is me and it's going to happen and uh, I get all credit for it. This is not me. God is doing this. The God of the Bible is doing this. So if the God of the Bible is real, he will show himself to be real on his own time. And like Jesus says, who's very humble, even he doesn't know the timing. And so I have to be even more careful the way I talk about it. But our job fundamentally is to warn people and, um, you know, not like rain on their parade, you know, like if it doesn't happen, um, then, you know, then just don't waste too much of their time, you know, and don't be from a practical perspective, don't waste too much of our time because we don't know with 100% certainty. It's like I said throughout this whole video, it's strong, very, very likely. If, if people just think all this chaos and coordinated confusion and enslavement in the world is just a coincidence and nothing really that deep or, or whatever or evil or um, serving any kind of purpose, you know, that's, that's up to them, you know, but they will, in my opinion, have to, it, when the mark of the beast comes out, make a decision if they really think that it's just a coincidence and not the God of the Bible architecting it. So in the meantime, we have to like do whatever we can to keep our sanity, but also let people enjoy their life, you know, as much as they have earned their, uh, whatever they have to, uh, to enjoy it, you know? And so even, even in Matthew 24, 38, it says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And so uh, this is that they they have earned their, uh, you know, whatever they've they have, whether it's been done righteously or not, they have those resources and we should let them enjoy it, you know. And so it, it does appear that there is a growing number of people now that um, are aware of the mark of the beast and just it's in the news more. Um, and all that stuff. I saw an article or a news clipping that I posted about Arkansas passing a bill. And so what happens with uh, the media is like they have it's like controlled opposition. They'll put a, something out there that they know is ultimately going to happen. They'll have talking points against it, make it seem like it's an intellectual discussion. But it's uh, it's obvious that it's like very mild resistance. You know, it's just a way to kind of psychologically put it, you know, get another extra little toenail in the door kind of thing, you know, before the, the full beast enters into our house, you know, and tries to overtake us, which I do not want to be around for that to happen. Uh, I don't even want to be around before that beast even is in my neighborhood. So, um, which I feel is the purpose for the second coming, but, and the rapture. But, um, so I, you know, I very much think we're in those days. Um, I think from a purely financial perspective, most people are running out of money. So <clears throat> the mark of the beast really couldn't prosper uh, anytime after five years because I think a lot of the a lot of the world will already have died off <clears throat> just through lack of resources you know and so it I don't think the Bible could be proven to be true and then also the Bible says that God's elect will be removed from the earth and so five years from now I don't think any righteous person will want to be on earth if it keeps going in this direction so all I need to see for me personally is that things just keep going in this direction you know like if if somehow central banking is like destroyed and then people are like distributing wealth fairly, people are like going to work and have productive lives and there's not all this enslavement and people living paycheck to paycheck, even in the quote unquote developed world and the better parts of the world, then I'd be like, shoot, like uh, we're not living in those times. <laughs> you know, it's just, it seems unlikely we'd be living in those times if that started happening in the next five years, even to, to like a slight degree. But if things keep kind of going the way they are right now, the, you know, the mainstream media is talking about the economy being great when it's not, you know, people struggling to find jobs after they've been unemployed and, um, you know, working um, 
going from salary positions to hourly or and struggling to even find hourly positions and if that keeps going and then if there's more and more really controlled opposition people saying everything's fine people not wanting to talk about things you know and really in many ways ball earthers getting all emotional and stuff about the shape of the earth and calling us stupid and all that more and more i know that that we're at the end because the world is is becoming would be even more so unlivable and um, it's just getting worse and then the righteous would not want to live here and so there would be nobody on the earth who would be a candidate for being the elect who would need to be rescued uh, and then the bible would not be true in, in that regard where the bible says that the end times will be cut short for the elect's sake and then some people the bible say it says will be will be taken away and so um none of those people would would uh, would function you know in a world like that and so that to me you know all those things kind of put together make the next five years to me um very very um clear that the bible will uh, prove itself to be true or uh or not and uh again i would just highly recommend people take a look at the verse uh related to the mark of the beast and the punishment and um you know just look at what's going on in the world right now and see that we're very much living in those times. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care. Bye.